Thank you for staying with us. It's Monday. Let's take a look at some uh, updates when it comes to the world of technology. Now, we'll kick off with uh, Twitter, who confirmed uh, just late last week uh, that it's testing a new tip jar feature. Now, the new addition utilizes a number of different payment platforms, including PayPal, Vimo, Patreon, Cash App, and Bandcap, all region dependence. Now, tip jar is an easy a uh, way to support the incredible voices that make up the conversation on Twitter. The company wrote in a blog post confirming the news. Now, this is a first step in our work to create new ways for people to receive and show support on Twitter with money. Now, currently available on both iOS and Android, the feature is designed to give users a way to quickly tip creators with a few taps. Tip jar is beginning to roll out select, group, uh, select groups of users, including nonprofits, journalists, journalists, I like that side, experts and creators. The company further plans to roll it out to additional groups and languages. So that's it. It also works for journalists. So it's very, very legal. If you like the work that a journalist is doing, you can use the tip jar feature. I'm very sure it is going to look around and find out how she can activate the tip jar feature in her Twitter account. All right, moving on from that now, um, how would you love to feel a conversation when, um, when someone is talking to you, but then doing it from somewhere else, right? Well, it can happen via the phone. Let's check out this video. So what happens is that while someone is talking to you, you can feel what <laughs> some people behind the scene here are really uh, having a go at this one. But yeah, I feel the conversation. Uh, of course, a design project by students in London. Uh, it's not something that is available in the open market. But hey, come on, a lot of what we have now started as design projects. Moving on from that to WhatsApp. Now, WhatsApp didn't have a very, very good 2021, less than a week into um, the new year, they already annoyed hundreds of thousands of users with a scary worded notification about a planned policy update. The backlash grew fast and millions of people, including several high-profile figures, started to explore rival apps, Signal and Telegram. Even governments, including India's WhatsApp biggest market by users, expressed concerns. Now, in the case of India, also an antitrust probe. The backlash prompted WhatsApp to offer a series of clarifications and assurances to users, and it also postponed the deadline for enforcing the planned update by three months. Now, with the May 15 deadline just a week away, we're able to quantify the real-world impact the aforementioned backlash had on WhatsApp user base. Nada. The vast majority of users that WhatsApp has notified about the planned update in recent months have updated, have accepted the update, a WhatsApp spokesperson told TechCrunch. Now, and the app continues to grow, added the spokesperson without sharing the exact figures. The company also didn't share how many users it has notified about the plan update. Facebook's recent earnings uh, calls gives us some idea. The company's family of apps had 3.45 billion monthly active users as of March 31, 2021, up from 3.3 on December 31st. Now, users who don't agree to the new terms, as previously reported, won't lose access to their accounts or any feature on May 15th. WhatsApp said, but after an unspecified number of weeks, such users will lose several core functionalities, though not at the same time. So that's it. I know most of you must have remembered when WhatsApp uh, put up that notice about an update earlier in the year. And a lot of people were saying, no, we're moving to other places, we're moving. They want to get our all information, uh, their privacy, and all of that. They have what they want. That is not a problem. It was more or less security and all of that. So be careful, be careful. When it comes to tech issues, make sure you listen to somebody who is, you know, a tech aficionado or somebody who is an IT specialist. Don't just listen to anybody, especially conspiracy theorists. Now, finally, uh, what would farming look like in the future? Maybe even now it's possible. Let's take a look at this.
Now you see that everything is being automated. Everything. Automation is something that the world has accepted. It is what it is now. Coding, you don't necessarily have to know how to, to automate something, but hey, you need to have an idea of how stuff works in the information technology space. That's it. That's all we're going to take on Tech Monday. Let's head over to the kitchen and find out how far they're doing there.